Hey folks, it's Carl at Sterling Health and Fitness. Thanks very much for tuning in. I get a lot of requests for basic nutrition information. Information people would like to know to establish pretty much like a baseline for a good foundation for a healthy dietary lifestyle. So I'm calling this Nutrition 101 so that we can get those people started, get them on the right track. All right. Now, for those of you who are further ahead and you have more knowledge, I want you to know there's a lot of stuff I'm going to be leaving out today, but it's very important information that will be forthcoming in future videos. Okay? These will include um, a lot of different things, alternative diets. For example, a gluten-free diet, which I practice myself. Um, vegan diet, vegetarian. Then we're going to also have videos talking uh, very specifically about organic versus inorganic. We're going to talk about preservatives in our foods. We'll also be talking about um, something that's a big topic right now because it's very important, especially in the United States, genetically modified foods, also known as GMOs. Okay? We're not going to talk about that stuff today. Okay? It is forthcoming and it is very important. Today, Nutrition 101, foundation for a good, healthy, dietary lifestyle. Okay, so let's get started and talk about nutrition and discuss it. What is nutrition? Well, of course, this is the process where we're feeding our bodies. We're giving it nourishment. We're feeding it what it needs so that we have energy and we can function throughout the day. And hopefully if we feed quality nutrients, we give quality nutrition, then we live hopefully an optimally longer life, a healthier life. Okay. This comes from a few different areas, one of them being macronutrients. And let's talk about what macronutrients are. Okay? They include carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. All right? Along with this today, we're going to be talking about fiber, uh, minerals, vitamins, and water. Okay? All these things are essential for optimal health, that we get the proper amount of all of those things. Okay? Now, the next step is, where do these things come from? What is in these things? How do we measure what we're putting in our bodies? And that brings us to the next thing here, which is calories, okay? This is a word that gets thrown around a lot. A lot of people don't actually know what a calorie is. It can be associated with uh, negativity a lot of times, so it has a negative connotation. Well, that would only be if you're eating too many of them. Let's talk about a calorie. What is it? Okay, well, a calorie, if you were to define it, is the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Okay, that's a really long definition. We don't really need to know that, but what we do need to know is calories are energy. All right? Calories are energy. Okay, now that we know what a calorie is and that it's a unit of energy, our next step is to figure out how many calories we should be consuming. But before we get to that, we have to know how many calories we are burning. Okay, so a commonly used equation to figure this out, which is pretty accurate, generally speaking, uh, a dietitians use it all the time, is called the mifflin saint Jour equation. Now, if you go to my website, which is sterlinghealthandfitness.com, click on the nutrition link, you'll see over in the left-hand column, mifflin saint Jour equation for figuring out how many calories you burn. It's based on five factors, okay? The first four factors calculate your resting metabolic rate. In other words, let's say you were sedentary. You get up in the morning, but you, uh, you don't move around all day, all right? And then you go to sleep at night. So you're in bed all day. The first four factors, which are your, your height, your weight, your gender, and your age, those things put into this equation, calculated a certain way, are going to give you the uh, uh, number of calories that you burn being completely sedentary. Okay, for myself, it comes out to be about 1,900 calories a day. If I didn't do anything all day, I lay in bed, stay awake, I'll burn about 1,900 a day. But there is a fifth element to that equation, and this is a variable because it varies for each of us. Okay, it's called your activity level. And we need to plug this number into the equation. It's the last thing that goes in. And this comes off of a chart, and that's on my website also under the equation. You'll see that there. Now, for me personally, when I put in my activity level, I'm burning about 3,100 calories a day. 
Okay, so now I know that based on my average daily activities, if I eat 3,100 calories a day, I'm going to stay the same So weight. if I consume 500 calories per day less than I burn, after one week, if I do this for seven days in a row, after one week, I'm going to lose one pound. Why? Because there are 3,500 calories in a pound, divided by seven, 500 a day. So that's one way to set a weight loss goal right there, folks. All right, so we're going to uh, get back on track here, though. We digressed a little bit. So we want to talk about once you establish your calorie intake goal, you need to figure out where they're going to come from. Okay, now this is where we get into the macronutrients. All right, I'm going to give you a couple sets of numbers here. The first set are the recommended daily allowances of the macronutrients. Let's talk about them, all right? We've got 45 to 65% of calories coming from carbs, 10 to 30% coming from proteins, and 20 to 35% coming from fats. So we want to keep in mind that, you know, we're all different. We have different activities we're involved in. So whereas these uh, recommended daily allowances have a range of percentages that they, that they span, for example, 45 to 65 percent of calories coming from carbs. Well, I know for me, uh, 65 percent of my calories coming from carbs would be too much. I don't need that many carbs. But I'm not a marathon runner, and if I was, or an ultra marathon runner, I might need that many carbs because carbs are fuel. So that's just an example. A bodybuilder, for example, they're probably going to eat less carbs on the, on the lower end of the carb scale anyways, and more protein. They'll be higher on the range of protein because they want that for their muscle development and recovery. All right, so we're all different. And it doesn't end there. Here are a couple examples of health issues which can, which can impact where we should get these macronutrients from. For example, somebody with polycystic ovary syndrome, they're going to be advised to go lower on the carbs, lesser on the carbs, and a little bit higher on the fat intake, because generally speaking, they'll do better with that kind of macronutrient intake. Whereas somebody with heart disease, they're going to be advised to cut down on the fat. All right? So let's just talk about it here uh, real quick. My calories, and this is just for me, so I'm not saying that this is good for you. You need to figure out where you're at. But 45 to 50 percent of my calories are coming from carbs. All right? So I eat 3,100 calories a day, about. About 1,500 are coming from carbs. Okay, 20 to 30% from protein, and 20 to 25% is coming from fat. That's for me. Okay, you need to figure out what's right for you. So that is a macronutrient breakdown. So let's talk about another area which is essential to optimum health and for a good diet. That is fiber. All right, folks? Fiber is essential for us to help eliminate the stuff we put in our bodies and get rid of the waste, move it out the other end. All right, the good news about fiber, we can't digest it. Okay, so it usually doesn't count against us as far as calories. All right, we eat it, we can't digest it, but it helps move that stuff out, okay? The breakdown looks like this. Men, 38 grams or more per day of fiber in your diet. Women, 25 grams or more be sure to include this in your diet. All right? So I want to move on to another topic here. This is one of my pet peeves, folks, and I just need to clear up some of the rumors out there, okay? You hear about low-carb diets and all that kind of stuff. Let's talk about it, all right? First of all, here's the deal. Carbs are not your enemy. Excess calories are your enemy, all right? All this stuff about low-carb diets, I say this about it. Not, okay, I'll put that up again in a minute. Low-carb diets are causing so many problems for people. And thankfully, a lot of them, after they get sick enough, they get back off of it, and then they're back eating their carbs again, realizing that it's the calories that's the problem, it's not the carbs, all right? So let's talk about this. What happens when you don't eat enough carbs? Okay, well, you get the short-term effects, okay, you get headaches, you get dizziness, weakness, fatigue, constipation. Who wants that? None of that is good, all right? 
But it gets worse, folks, because we have long-term uh, carb dieters, uh, low-carb dieters out there. There are people doing this long-term, and I'll tell you what's associated with that, and it ain't pretty, all right? We have cancers of various types, coronary heart disease, stroke, depression because your brain is starved, and osteoporosis. All of these things are tied to long-term low-carb diet. You don't want that, folks. We got enough problems out there. Don't create more. Yes, you're going to lose weight. If you go on a no-carb diet or low-carb diet, of course you're going to lose weight, all right? But the side effects aren't good. You just saw what they are. You don't want to be doing that to your body. So the question a lot of people have is, well, where do I get my carbs from? I'm glad they asked because it gives me a chance to set them straight. Let's talk about this. Basically, we have two types of carbohydrates, okay? We have simple and we have complex. We want to lean towards the complex carbohydrates. These are better for us, okay? Simple carbohydrates are things like refined white flours and sugars. These things tend to stay with us, okay? Let's take a look. Okay, so we've got uh, complex carbs. You're going to get these things in some of your veggies out there. You're going to get them in whole grain breads, different types of pastas and rice, sweet potatoes, oatmeal, and the list goes on. But you definitely want to avoid the white sugars and the refined flours, okay? Because think about it like this. You go to the bakery and you buy a donut. You know how donuts kind of stick with you? They're around that midsection. Well, that's because it's the refined sugar and flour. It's the white flour, the white sugar that's usually going into those things. And those things stay with you. They only have a single bond. A simple carb has a single bond. It's so easy for the body to break that down. It just stays right with you. There's no energy required, hardly any energy required to break those things down. Whereas a complex carb has a triple bond. Okay, your body has to work hard. It takes a lot of energy okay, to break that down, and that tends not to stick with you like these other carbs. But remember, though, carbs are not the enemy. Excess calories are your enemy. Please don't go on a low-carb diet. You're going to pay a price for it. It's never good. So let's talk about our next macronutrient, which are proteins, all right? We're going to look to some lean meats for these, all right? Chicken, lean red meat. A lot of people are against eating red meat, by the way, and that's fine. I eat some now and then, but I can assure you that when I eat it, it is lean, all right? Seafood, eggs, and some dairy, all good sources of protein, okay? Now, if you're vegetarian or not, you can add in other forms of protein, too. For example, the legumes, all right? Uh, soy products, tofu, various types of beans and lentils, and lots of other stuff, too. You can just get online. You can Google this stuff, and you can find out some really good protein sources also. And the last macronutrient we'll talk about is fats. Got to have our fats, folks. Vitamins A, E, D, and K are all fat-soluble. When you don't have fat intake, you don't assimilate A, E, D, and K properly, leaving you potentially nutrient deficient in one or more of those vitamins, okay? So obviously we want to we want to look towards healthy choices in our fats. So here's a little list here, just a few. You can also Google these and look up healthy fat uh, sources. Avocados and olives, they're great, all right? Extra virgin olive oils, uh, clarified butter, coconut oil. I've actually been using uh, coconut oil a lot recently, and it works out great. Lots of different nuts and seeds like almonds, cashews, pecans, pistachios, macadamia nuts, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, pine nuts, sunflower seeds, all great sources of fat. All right? So, last thing I want to say about fats is a lot of people are totally against it. Like, oh, no, no, I can't get any fat. Well, remember what I said about the vitamins A, E, D, and K? They're fat soluble. Keep in mind, folks. Your average professional athlete gets 22% of their calories from fat. If they're doing it, you're going to want to do it too, all right? So that pretty much sums it up in a nutshell, folks. 
just the, this, we just scratched the surface today, okay, talking about the bare minimum, the bare essentials for a foundation of decent nutrition, how many calories you should be eating, where they should come from, okay? The last thing, though, we didn't talk about this, and it's real simple, water. Drink your water. Stay hydrated. We're made mostly of water anyways. We need water to make our brain function, keep our kidneys flushed. We need to drink water. Hydration is absolutely essential for good health, optimum health. All right, any questions, shoot me a note from my website, sterlinghealthandfitness.com. We have lots more videos coming out real soon with a lot more details on every single thing we talked about today. Thank you again for tuning in, folks. This is Nutrition 101, and we're moving up from here. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.